What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new free add-on from the guys over at Polygonic for managing your assets. If you have any questions about anything we talk about, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so InGon is a free add-on from the guys over at Polygonic. And um, you probably know them from either the Botanic add-on, the Materialic, the Traffic, or the Aquatic add-ons. So basically, they're um, kind of known for their library add-ons. So Botanic, for example, is a very popular add-on um, when it comes to trees and plants and other things having to do with vegetation. Um, so it's a super powerful collection of different assets, and it's also got some other tools as well. But InGon is a tool that they just released to help you manage your different assets, um, specifically having to do with their assets, but maybe with other assets in the future. And so um, what it is, is it's a tool that you can install that allows you to browse your assets. Now, one of the other things I like about this though, is not only does it allow you to browse your assets, it also helps you set up those polygonic um, assets, so like the botanic ones, the materialic ones, um, for use with the Blender asset browser as well. So even if you just use this to set those up, I think it's a great it's a great addition to their collection of different uh, workflows right here. And so the way that this works is um, it basically imports what are known as these PAQ files. So the PAQ files are basically collections of their different assets. I know in the past it has been a little bit painful with like material like for example to actually get the assets to load into the asset browser properly. And so this is kind of their solution to that. Now, in addition to that, it also has some other interesting tools like um, adding a snap to ground function, a random transform function, um, as well as a scatter function, which gives you the ability to scatter objects on a surface really quickly. So it does kind of roll all of those into a single add-on, which is nice. Um, note that if you do fill out their survey, right here, you can get sample asset packs or starter kits for botanic, aquatic, traffic, and materialic. So if you are looking for some free assets, you can just go through their survey right here. Once you're done with the survey, it's gonna give you access to those files that you can download and import into Blender. So let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. And I will link to all of this in the notes down below. And so the way that it works is you start off by installing InGon. So um, within your add-on section, you just wanna download and install the zip file that comes along with this. And then you wanna make sure that InGon is activated. So when you do that right here, it's going to pop up a little window that looks like this. Now this for me, um, as someone who uses, especially material like for my materials, um, this is extremely helpful. There's a button here for installing your asset pack. And so when you install your asset pack, what that's going to do is that's going to let you just find that file and this is going to install it. And you can actually set an installation path. Um, so you can set wherever you want those to be installed when you're doing this. You can also come in here and delete these out if you want to, but you just click on install asset pack, you pick a pack. So say you wanted to bring in like the aquatic one, you would just select that. And when you do that, it's going to ask you where you want to install it right here. Notice how right here it's telling me that this is already installed, so I don't really wanna do this, um, but you can set where to install this. And then once you do this, it just shows up both in the InGon asset browser, but also in the Blender asset browser. And so now that you have this enabled and you have those asset packs installed, what you can do is you can access those from in your window. Now, the first thing that's a little weird is if you tap the in letter key, we're going to look under the polygonic tab right here. Notice how if you click on the button to browse assets within the InGon dropdown right here. So if I click on this, when I mouse over an area, notice what it's going to do is it's going to take that area and it's basically going to set it to the InGon browser, which isn't necessarily what you want in this view. So what I might do is I might click and drag this this way do a browse assets and then click over here. And what that does is that pops up your InGon browser. And your InGon browser is going to show you which different packs you have installed. So for example, I have the full Materialic add-on in here. So I can click through and I can look at like the concrete, I can look at the material, uh, the uh, fabric, whatever's contained in here, I can look at those. This allows you to see whatever's in here um, just by clicking on it right here. Now. Um, you can also sort by different things. So for example, you can sort by size. So 
if you want to only pick up things that are under a certain height, notice how as I bring this down right here, it's going to filter that out. And then you can click on the X button right here in order to unfilter this. But it does have a pretty good collection of filters in here if you're looking for something specific. And in this case, probably Materialic would be a better example, right? So I could filter um, by if the object has displacement or not, like this. So it gives you a bunch of different filter options. Now note that when I set this up, and I'm gonna click and drag this up a little bit. Note when I set this up, this also added those into my Blender Asset Browser like this. So I can also access those from directly inside of the Asset Browser if I wanna do that. So you don't need to use the Asset functionality of InGon if you don't want to. But say that you did, what we could do is, let's say we wanted to bring in a vehicle from this uh, sample pack. So these are kind of samples right here, but if I click on one of these, so say I was to pick this, uh, let's go with this tricycle right here. So we're just gonna click on this and bring it in. Notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna drop that tricycle in here um, based on wherever your 3D cursor is. And it's still compiling the shaders, but you can see how it just drops this in here, no problem directly inside of Blender. Now notice that it does bring this in here as um, kind of an instance rather than an editable object. So I can't like tab into edit mode and edit this right now, but if you tap the N key, there is an option over here to convert this to an editable object. So as soon as I do that, now I can tab in here and I can access the geometry of the object. And then I think you can also access um, different things about the object from within the traffic settings over here. I'm not sure if you need to have traffic installed in order for these to show up or not. That's one I'm not 100% sure about. But notice how when I convert this to an editable object, I now have access to those different things in here, like the where sliders that come with um, this particular um, asset right here. But you can use this to drop these objects in here and you can also make changes to them. But there are a couple other tools in here. Like for example, say I was to take this object and I wanna take this whole thing. Say I was to move it up. Notice how there's an option here to transform this to ground. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this and it's gonna drop it to whatever your ground is inside of your scene. And so in addition, it also has a tool in here and so let's say that we wanted to bring a tree in from the botanic settings right here these are probably going to be way too big um, but we can go ahead and bring them in and then kind of bring them down so i'm going to bring this tree in like this we go ahead and scale it down i'm going to move it over and then i'm going to bring in another tree i'm going to scale that down as well like this so I can move it up and then snap it to the ground and then move it around. But notice how there's an option in here to transform selected by random. And so when I do that, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna randomly scale and rotate these objects right here. Now, as far as I know, you don't have a ton of control over like how big the bounds are in here, but you can use this in order to randomly rotate and place objects in your scene. Note that you can reset those transforms just by clicking on the arrow right. Here And so there's also a function in here to scatter objects on objects. So in this case, right, I've got this object right here, this circle, and I wanna scatter some assets on this circle. Well, to do that, you can click on the plus button right here, and we're gonna go ahead and click on okay, and that's gonna apply a particle system to this surface. Well, notice how this pops up a little collection over here, and then you can drag the objects that you want into that collection. So let's say that I was to use some of the grass that they have in here. So like this one and this one, I'm just gonna bring those in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag them into the particle system right here. And notice how nothing is happening. The reason nothing is happening is because these are in here as the collection files. Well, what I wanna do is I want to convert them to editable. So notice how I'm converting these to editable right here. And now I've got this particle system that's applied to this surface. And I wanna make sure that I scroll down and I click on the button for refresh in order to refresh the particles. But now I'm able to add the number of objects that are in here. I can also adjust the scale of those objects like this. And you can also paint density in here. 
So notice how I can use this in order to paint density along the surface. And there's not a ton of geometric detail in here, so it's not giving me the best result in the world, but it's very good for um, just kind of painting in little details. Then this one, notice how I can paint it back out. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to toggle my wireframe on so I can see where those objects are. And I would obviously want more geometric detail in here, but notice how I can paint these in and out like this in order to set where they're going to show up in my scene. So this does also come with tools for um, scattering objects as well. And again, notice how you can adjust the seed, you can adjust the scale, you can adjust the scale randomness, you can kind of do whatever you want with that in kind of a simple scattering sort of way. And then say we wanted to add a ground material, we could just go to Materialic, bring in one of the ground materials right here, and we could just apply it to that surface like this. So now we've got grass, we've got ground, um, we've got all these different stuff directly inside of Blender. All right, so overall, this is kind of a supporting add-on for the polygonic add-ons, but if you have any of those, this makes managing those things significantly easier in my opinion. So for no other reason than to download it, fill out the survey and get some free assets, it's definitely worth checking out. But leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.